This video explains about one among the commonly used software architecture called Event Driven Architecture EDA, which is also known as Message Driven Architecture. An event can be defined as a significant change in state. So whenever there is a significant change in the state of an application or a variable, it triggers the event. This event in turn, emits a message or notification. Normally in an event-driven architecture, there will be three roles involved. First is event source, where the event occurs and the message is triggered. Second is the event consumer, which receives and interpret the message that is triggered from event source. Third is event bus or the middleware which receives the message from source and forwarded to consumer. Though this event bus is an optional element, it recommended to have it in the event-driven architecture. Let's take a famous example, WhatsApp. Whenever a user sends a message, an event occurs in the event source where the user sends a message. Next, it reaches the cloud, which acts as a broker and holds the message and sends the message to the event consumer which is nothing but the receiver of the message. There are two types of topology are used in event-driven architecture. One mediator topology and the second one is broker topology let's look into mediator topology first the mediator topology is useful for events that have multiple steps and require some level of orchestration to process the event for example a single event of placing an order to buy an item online might require first to validate the order then check for stock availability checking for the available payment gateway etc. All of these steps would require some level of orchestration to determine the order of steps and which can be done serially or in parallel. There are four main types of architectural components within the mediator topology, event queues, an event mediator, event channels, and event processors. The event flow starts with a client sending an event to an event queue which is used to transport the event to the event mediator. The event mediator receives the initial event and orchestrates that event by sending additional asynchronous events to event channels to execute each step of the process. Event processors, which listen on the event channels, receive the event from the event mediator and execute business logic to process the event. As opposed to shown in the figure, in real-world scenario, the number of event queue will vary from a dozen to hundreds. There are two types of events within this pattern, an initial event and a processing event. The initial event is the original event received by the mediator, whereas the processing events are generated by the mediator and received by the event processing components. The event mediator component is responsible for orchestrating the steps contained within the initial event. For each step in the initial event, the event mediator sends out a specific processing event to an event channel, which is then received and processed by the event processor. It is important to note that the event mediator doesn't actually perform the business logic necessary to process the initial event, rather, it knows of the steps required to process the initial event. Event channels are used by the event mediator to asynchronously pass processing events related to each step in the initial event to the event processors. The event processor components contain the application business logic necessary to process the processing event. Now let's look into broker topology. The broker topology differs from the mediator topology in the way that, there is no central event mediator. Rather, the message flow is distributed across the event processor components in a chain-like fashion through a lightweight message broker. This topology is useful when you have a relatively simple event processing flow and you do not want central event orchestration. There are two main types of architectural components within the broker topology. A broker component and an event processor component. The broker component can be centralized and contains all of the event channels that are used within the event flow. The event channels contained within the broker component can be message queues, message topics, or a combination of both. Now let's look into the score. First is, development. Since we need to be knowing all the events in upfront during the designing phase and put more work on the coupling the components, the score is 2.75 out of 5. Next is, testing. Unlike the layered architecture, 
We can test the event individually at event processor level and need to invoke the event channel or mediator always. Hence the ease of testability score is 2.5 out of 5. Next is, deployment. Deployment on distributed environment is relatively easy compared to other software architectures. Hence the score is 4 out of 5. Next feature is maintenance. Since the layers are loosely components are loosely coupled, maintenance and enhancement would be relatively easier. Hence the score is 3.5. Performance. Only selective amount of components are involved during an event handling and not the all. Hence the score is 3.75. Overall agility. Since the adding extra components is not affecting the existing components, the score for overall agility is 4. Thanks for watching this video, and hope it is helpful. If you like this video please hit the like, and subscribe for more knowledge sharing videos.